native to Australia, peacock spiders are a very small species, typically growing to no more than a quarter of an inch across. And rather than spinning webs to catch their prey, they instead hunt it down and pounce upon it. As you probably guessed, they are a type of jumping spider. A miracle mover who can't afford to put a foot wrong. But this behavior isn't what makes them unique. They have an unusual mating ritual, whereby the males perform dances to attract females and have strikingly bright colorations across their abdomens that create a sort of optical illusion that makes them seem even more vivid than they actually are. They can be a blend of oranges, blues, reds, and greens, and are undoubtedly the most beautiful colored spiders of all. It's important for the males to stand out, not just because they need to be able to find a mate, but also due to the consequences if they fail to impress a female. If their dance isn't good enough, or their abdomens aren't colorful enough, before moving to her next suitor, the female will eat the loser. That is, of course, unless he's fast enough to evade her grasp, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Think you hate spiders already? Well, 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 welly, well, well, imagine if they were also green and could jump. Terrifying, right? Well, imagine no more. Because the Magnolia Green Jumper is very much a thing. Belonging to a whole family of spiders who can jump, the Magnolia Green Jumper is indigenous to many different parts of the United States. The males are between 5 to 6 millimeters, with the females coming in slightly larger at 7 to 8 millimeters. Don't you dare think you can hide from these things, as they have significantly good eyesight with an efficient telephoto quality. When you think of what a tarantula looks like, you normally imagine dark colors, like brown and black, that help them to camouflage into their surroundings. But there's one species that's native to India that's very different indeed. The Goody Sapphire Ornamental Tarantula is a surprisingly vivid shade of blue all over, something that makes it one of the most beautiful spiders in the world. Wow, that was amazing and also goes some way to explain why they're now critically endangered. They're only found within a very specific 39 square mile region of protected forest, but despite this, their habitat is being severely affected by human activity, which combined with the spider's demand on the illegal wildlife market means that, in recent surveys, not a single individual was found in the wild. There are no known human deaths as the result of a bite from this species, but they are known to have a power powerful venom that's classified as being medically significant. With fangs that can reach up to three quarters of an inch in length, even a dry bite can prove to be extremely painful. Growing to around an inch long, the eight-spotted crab spider is one of the largest known species of crab spider, but it's the coloration that makes it unique amongst all of its close relations. With a bright orange color that's accented by black spots across its body and black tips to its legs, it's thought that this spider has actually developed its aesthetic as a form of camouflage to make it look like something completely different. A ladybug. The species was only discovered in the jungles of Singapore in 1924. Oh, and since then, they have only ever been seen sporadically. They don't weave webs to catch their prey, but instead sit in flowers and trees and wait for pollinators and other insects to approach. Because these animals don't recognize it as a spider, they don't have any warning that they're approaching a trap until it's too late. Quite how many eight-spotted crab spiders there are and whether they're at risk of extinction is not exactly clear, but they're definitely one of the rarest spiders you could ever come across. The horrid ground weaver, whose Latin name translates to mean spurious bristly weaver, was only first discerned in 1995 in the city of Plymouth in the UK, and only nine specimens have ever been found. They are a type of dwarf spider, growing to only a tenth of an inch long, and make their homes within small cracks and recessions within coastal rocks which explains why they're so difficult to find. 
As a result, very little is known about this species, beyond what can be inferred by others that are closely related to them. Even then, because of their size, they are very difficult to study. And there are frequent changes in taxonomy, as it's realized that what were previously thought to be separate species are, in fact, the same. There is a popular superstition involving dwarf spider, though. It was said that if one was seen crawling across you, it meant that it had come to weave you some new clothes and was seen as a sign of good financial fortune. The Sierra Cacachila's wandering spider is the only species within its genus, having only first been discovered in 2013. It's called a wandering spider, and the reason it's, it's called a wandering spider is it doesn't build a web. They are native to the Sierra de las Cacachilas mountain range that's in Baja California, sure, and the only known place where any have been found is within an abandoned mine in the area. Described as being a small tarantula that's about the size of a softball from leg to leg, it has a surprisingly small amount of hair over its body and has an iridescent mustard brown abdomen. During the expedition that discovered them, the team found a number of shed exoskeletons and found 24 living individuals in a cluster, eight of which they removed for further study. While doing this, a researcher managed to get bit by one of the spiders, making him the first known victim. He described the after effects as being similar to being poked by the spine of a cactus, and that he experienced mild pain for around 24 hours around the site of the bite. Number 10. The Lyoth Bird-Eating Spider of the more than 800 different species of tarantula around the world, there's one that's the biggest and baddest of them all. The Goliath bird-eating spider. With a leg span of up to 12 inches and weighing up to 7 ounces, it's the biggest species of spider in the world. And lives in the dense undergrowth of the rainforests across South America. And an absolute cert for the Deadly 60. Despite its name, it rarely hunts birds, and instead mainly feeds on worms, amphibians, and insects. As with other tarantulas, they don't weave webs, but instead live in burrows. And after incapacitating their prey with their venom, they drag the body back to the burrow, where the toxins they inject liquefy the internal organs of their victims so they can suck them dry. When they feel under threat, this species adopts a posture when they begin to rub hair-like structures that can be released into the air and can become a severe irritant to the skin and respiratory system. Their fangs, which can grow to up to two inches long, can easily puncture human skin too. And if they decide to inject venom, something they'll only ever do in self-defense, it will be quite painful, but no more so than a bee. Hercules baboon spider, also known as the king baboon spider, is a species of tarantula that's native to regions around East Africa. Rusty brown or orange in color, they are a surprisingly slow-growing species, but by the time they fully reach adulthood, they can measure 8 inches across. Look at that beauty! They are a burrowing species, so have specially adapted thick back legs that are used to dig into the ground. They weave silk at the entrance to their burrows, which is how they detect if anything is approaching, and can quickly pounce out to capture prey and drag it back in. They are a highly defensive species, with a potent venom in comparison to other tarantulas, but while it'll definitely definitely sting, it's not able to cause any long-term harm to a person. Due to their colorations and rarity, they are, therefore, popular with collectors, but their tricky temperament means that they aren't suitable for first-time owners. In the wild, they mainly hunt beetles, cockroaches, and other spiders, but they aren't immune to predators either. They are themselves hunted by birds, baboons, and other large mammals that have developed methods to capture them without falling victim to their bite. Spiders have a wide range of different markings and colorations but perhaps the most cheerful and surprising is the happy face spider, a species that's native to the islands of Hawaii. Growing to just a fifth of an inch long, they are green or yellow in color, but have black dots and markings on their abdomens that often resemble a smiling face. Every spider has a slightly different arrangement of these patterns, and they are even more different when compared from island to island. But most have this thin black curve that creates the effect. They 
live in jungles, where they hide underneath leaves. They spin small webs, which are used to hold themselves in place, and they actually use the leaf itself to detect the vibrations of any potential prey. This guides them towards small insects, and when they're not in search of food, they're so well hidden, you probably wouldn't even know they were there. The females live a very sedentary lifestyle. And then when the babies hatch out, you get the whole family sharing them. Rarely leaving the tree they call home, and it's the job of the males to move through the jungle in search of them, and to perform a ritualistic dance to attract their attention. After mating, the female will lay a clutch of eggs that they protect, and the male's job is done, so will die soon after. Number 7. Chinese Hourglass Spider Trapdoor spiders live in burrows in the forest undergrowth, but their method for sealing the entrance means that they are a very unusual looking animal. The Chinese hourglass spider is one of the best examples of this, but the chances of you ever seeing one are very low, because they're extremely rare in the wild. Reaching just over an inch long, they dig holes of up to six inches deep and line the bottom with silk. They use their own body to plug the opening to their burrow, and to do this, they have developed flattened abdomens that have a hardened disc on them. Ito pala hindi nakagapang sa smooth surface eh, so... That's covered in rib-like structures and are surrounded by strong spines. While they spend most of their time in the base of their burrow, if they ever feel under threat, they'll use this to plug up the entrance. And only the most persistent of predators will have any chance of getting through. They are so rare that they've only been seen six times since 2000. And a recent farmer who discovered one didn't even think it was a spider at first, and mistook it for an ancient relic. When it moved though, he realized what it was after investigating online, and found out that they are highly sought after for scientific research. Despite their scarceness, this species has been known about for a long time, and was even mentioned in the oldest surviving Chinese dictionary, the Urya, that was written more than 2,000 years ago. The scorpion-tailed spider is an unusual species that are native to Australia. They rarely grow any larger than half an inch long, and can be a range of colors from pale cream all the way through to dark brown or black. Occasionally, they may have brightly colored markings, such as yellow or red patches on their abdomens, but this isn't a feature that's always present. Wow, first time ko makita ng ganito. Kala ko dahong ganito lang na nalukot, ano? It's only the females of the species that have a tail, which is where they get their name from because it almost looks like that of a scorpion's. They don't, however, have a stinger on the end of it, and it's believed to be used for tightly holding onto their web and prey. They can also hurl this tail over their body in a defensive position, and while it adds an extra level of protection, it probably also tricks any approaching birds or larger spiders into thinking that they are actually a scorpion, and makes them think twice about attacking just in case they get caught by a sting. Native to regions across Europe, the bizarre-looking fenraft spider is a semi-aquatic species that tracks down its prey on the water surface. They live around areas of standing water and watch out for the presence of pond skaters, dragonflies, fish, and other spiders. They keep their front legs in the water to detect the slightest of vibrations, and when the opportunity presents itself, they leap into action. They are able to run across the water thanks to two main principles. The fact that they have hairy feet and don't weigh very much, so don't break the surface tension of the water. Duck beneath the surface and catch things that are swimming around just underneath the water. And the fact that they spread their legs out wide and hold their bodies low to further reduce the pressure exerted onto the surface. They have, however, been seen to hunt underwater too, and can run down plant stems in search of their prey. Despite having a wide range, they are rarely ever seen, and are therefore categorized as being endangered. There are projects underway that are trying to reintroduce the species to places where they once thrived, and it's hoped that this will help bring them back from the brink. Found in different regions across the world, there are a number of different genera of wolf spiders, the largest of which can grow to two or three inches long. They have eight eyes arranged in three rows, and unlike other species of spider that typically have poor eyesight, wolf spiders have extremely good vision, which, in combination with the hairs on their legs that detect vibrations, means that they're perfectly adapted to tracking and hunting down prey. They don't spin webs and instead prowl the ground and trees in search of food. 
Ravidosa punctulata is also known as the dotted wolf spider. Unusually, due to their transient nature, the females carry their egg sacs with them wherever they go, and they don't have a dedicated burrow or nest to return to, instead taking advantage of any nook or cranny that they can find. They'll usually avoid encounters with anything that's bigger than them, but if they feel threatened, they'll adopt a defensive stance and will proactively lunge and bite to try and deter attackers. While they do have venom, it's not considered to be particularly problematic to humans. But if you do get bitten, you can expect to experience soreness and swelling around the wound for several days. Ladybird spiders are native to northern and central Europe, and the males have bright red-colored abdomens with black spots that can easily be mistaken for ladybugs. Growing to around a third of an inch long, they live on heathlands, where they dig silk-lined burrows and build a thin silky web at the entrance. This functions as a trap for unsuspecting insects, and when they walk over it, the spider will grab hold of them and pull them into their lair. Once present in large numbers, the destruction of their natural habitats means that these spiders are now at risk of extinction. Just 20 years ago, it was thought that there was no more than 50 individuals left in the wild. But thanks to recent conservation efforts, their population numbers are showing signs of recovery. Just because they're small doesn't mean they are harmless, though. While they can't kill a human with their venom, bites have historically been said to lead to severe pain, inflammation, and a fever. Although this link is not yet scientifically proven and may merely be a coincidence, found in forest regions across Asia, the long-horned orb weaver spider is so unusual in its appearance that it doesn't even look like a spider at first, and much more resembles a beetle. This is because the females grow hardened abdomens, which function as a protective shell, and that have three pairs of spines, the central ones of which grow upwards and curved, and look like horns. Furthermore, they develop bright colors, and can be red, white, yellow, or black. They also have intricate markings all over their shells, but quite why they have evolved to look like this isn't yet known. It's most likely that it's an attempt to look far more dangerous to potential predators, and may actually be a form of imitation. If they appear to be a tough beetle instead of a spider, then maybe fewer animals will try to eat them. They spend most of their lives hidden beneath leaves on trees, having spun large webs that can be three or four feet wide between branches. The only time they emerge is when something has become caught in their trap, and they will wrap it in silk and pull it to one side before they begin to eat. The arrow-shaped microthena is a species of small spider that's native to the eastern U.S. and Central America. They are orb weavers, which means they build large, circular webs to catch their prey, and will wait on one side until their food comes to them. What's unusual about this species, though, is the coloration and shape of their abdomens. Rather than looking like most other spiders, they have developed a hard shell that can be a multitude of different colors, and helps to defend them against birds and other predators. It's also a very unusual shape, tapering off in a triangular formation that looks like an arrow. Growing to no more than a fifth of an inch long, they have venom that quickly liquefies the internal organs of anything they catch in their web, which, by the time they've pulled them to the side to consume, becomes a nutrient-rich drink for them to suck through a straw-like appendage in their mouths. Because of their way of hunting, they are particularly susceptible to habitat change, and it's for this reason that they're believed to be becoming increasingly rare, and the chances of you ever seeing one in the wild are extremely remote.